Hi guys, welcome back to Charlie's Garage. Um, I have been asked by a friend of mine to try to explain how diesel engines are running cleaner than they ever have in the past, how emissions have been improved on them, and to kind of try and simplify the process by which it does it and talk about the components in a way that even someone who doesn't work on the engines can understand. So uh, it's important to remember that there are three major contaminants in diesel exhaust that we want to try and get rid of. The first of those is called NOx or nitrates of oxygen, uh, NOx is the chemical name. Uh, the other one is hydrocarbons, which is a fancy way of saying unburnt fuel. We don't want fuel vapors that weren't burned during the combustion process getting into the atmosphere. And then the third one is the fact that diesels burn a lot nastier than gasoline does. It's not as clean of a burn. So there is actually this uh, particulate matter that we call soot that comes out of the diesel exhaust. And so we want to trap that and also not let that get released out into the atmosphere. So there are multiple ways of doing this on a diesel engine. Uh, we have two primary emissions control devices that are on the engine itself and that is the exhaust gas recirculation system and the crankcase ventilation and filtration system. In the exhaust pipe, we have three more systems. Uh, we have what's called a diesel oxidation catalyst, we have a diesel particulate filter, and we have selective catalyst reduction. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to show you the two systems that are on the engine before we move into the exhaust piping and talk about what's called the after treatment system. Okay, so the first uh, after or first exhaust system that we're going to talk about or emissions device is the exhaust gas recirculation. EGR is when we take exhaust gas that's been produced by the combustion process that used to in the old days go straight out the tailpipe. Now we put some of that exhaust gas back in the cylinder. So one of the first things that happens is right down here you have your exhaust manifold and you can see that your turbocharger is mounted to that. So most of the exhaust gas that leaves the uh, exhaust manifold is going to travel through this uh, turbo to spool it up. A small amount of that exhaust gas is allowed to go through this part right here, which is called the EGR cooler. Uh, so the whole reason we're putting exhaust gas back in the cylinder is not because it's hot, but because it's inert, which means it has no oxygen in it. So we want to send that inert exhaust gas back to the cylinders, but we don't want it superheated. So this guy right here has coolant passages that go through it, plus the exhaust gas that goes through the middle of it. So it transfers the heat from that exhaust into the coolant. And up here, you can see what we call the crossover tube. It comes from the end of this cooler and it travels over the engine to the other side, which if we look at that other side of the engine right here, it comes, that crossover tube comes across and comes to right here. This component is called the EGR valve. The EGR valve is going to open and it can be a spool or it could be a butterfly. It doesn't really matter. But what it does is it controls the amount of exhaust gas that is going into the cylinders. And you can see that it is mounted right here above the intake manifold. So it is controlling this pipe right here is the fresh air coming from the turbocharger into the intake. This is where the exhaust could mix in with that fresh air. So why are we doing this? Why are we putting exhaust gas back into the engine? Uh, when I ask my students this question, I get the, well, we wanna reburn the exhaust gas. That's the answer I get all the time. No, there's no oxygen or very little oxygen left in the exhaust gas to burn. What we are doing is taking up space in the cylinder with exhaust gas. If there's less of this fresh air coming from the turbo, because this is exhaust gas is taking up some of the space, what that means is that in the cylinder, you have less oxygen. And when you have less oxygen in the cylinder and you ignite the cylinder with fuel and heat, less oxygen means less heat is performed or uh, less heat is produced during the combustion process. And NOx, N-O-X, nitrates of oxygen, is a byproduct of that heat. So by pumping an inert exhaust gas into the cylinder and taking up space, we have cooler combustion temps and we produce less NOx. 
The reason why we use a valve is the downside of EGR. EGR can greatly reduce the amount of power that an engine produces because if you have less oxygen and less heat during combustion, you're of course gonna produce less power. So in high demand, this exhaust valve will close so none of that exhaust gas can get into the cylinder. You're cruising in 10th gear doing 80 down the interstate, you only need a fraction of the power this engine can create. So this valve will open up and start reducing NOx formation by cooling down combustion temps. So that is the first part of this. The second part on the engine is crankcase ventilation. When an engine ages and the rings in the cylinder wall start to get worn down, more and more of the compression from the cylinder gets past the piston rings down into the oil pan region of the engine. And if we didn't do something to relieve that pressure, it would blow out seals on the engine and cause other issues. So back in the old days, we simply had a hole in the side of the block with a tube stuck in it. The EPA didn't like that because the EPA said, hey, you're dripping oil and fuel and stuff all over the ground with that tube. So now your crankcase ventilation is also considered an emissions control device. Up here on the top of the valve cover, I'm not gonna take it apart, but inside of this is a filter. So as that crankcase pressure builds up, it travels through this filter. This filter is going to trap all the oil and the fuel, and eventually that oil and fuel will find its way back into the oil pan. Uh, but the big thing is that once the filter does its job, the only thing coming out of the crankcase now is pure air pressure, the gas pressure that escaped through the piston rings without the oil and the fuel in it. So either that air is gonna go back to the intake in a closed system, or it's gonna go out to the atmosphere in an open system. But the biggest reason why crankcase ventilation is now considered an emissions device is this filter. So now we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about the after treatment stuff, the stuff that happens in the exhaust pipe after the turbocharger. All right, so I'm showing you guys this one on a heavy duty engine because I want you guys to see the after treatment fuel injector. So like we said before, you got your exhaust manifold, up here you got an EGR cooler, and then you got your turbo. Once the exhaust pulls up the turbo, it wants to go out the tailpipe, but we're gonna send it through some stuff to clean it up first. The first after treatment device that you're gonna encounter on some engines, not all engines have this, and I'll explain the difference in a little bit, is this after treatment fuel injector right here. This is going to pump uh, fuel into the exhaust stream so that the exhaust stream gets super hot. We will explain why we want it super hot here in a minute, but just remember that this is here and it exists. And when we get to the DPF or diesel particulate filter, we'll discuss why it's there. The exhaust then travels through the pipe and it's gonna to come to the after treatment system. So if we take a step back here, we can see that this after treatment system consists of two canisters. So on the top piece right here, the first thing that uh, it's going to encounter is this section of this canister, which is called the diesel oxidation catalyst. This one has precious metals in it that react with the uh, exhaust and the fuel that's in the exhaust to cause it to basically oxidize or burn that fuel. That keeps fuel vapors from being released into the atmosphere. So that's your DOC or diesel oxidation catalyst. The other half of this assembly is called the diesel particulate filter. So I mentioned that we have soot, that solid particulates that come out of the exhaust that we don't want going into the atmosphere. Well, this is just a giant filter for that. And it collects that soot. Up here at the top, you can see that it has a sensor and this is called a Delta P sensor. It measures the pressure at the inlet side of the filter and it measures the pressure at the outlet side of the filter. This is going to tell the computer how full of soot this filter is. When that pressure differential gets really high, because if it gets plugged up, pressure is going to skyrocket right on here on the inlet side, and it's going to decrease a lot on the outlet side, and you're going to have a pressure differential that grows. Once it reaches a certain point, it's going to tell the computer that this is plugged up and that it needs to go through what's called a regen process. The regen process is when we take the soot we superheat the exhaust so much that the soot level burns down to ash because soot still has some burnable carbon material in it. So that's what regen is, is burning soot down to ash. 
So earlier we mentioned that after treatment fuel injector. Remember that guy? If I put fuel into the exhaust system and the DOC oxidizes that fuel, what happens to exhaust heat? Goes way up. That helps burn the soot in this guy down to ash, right? So eventually, if you keep regening this guy and you keep burning the soot down to ash, the ash level is going to gradually fill up this filter. So even though you regen it a lot, eventually you're going to get to the point where you have to take this filter off and get it cleaned out or serviced, all right? So once we trap the particulate, uh, the only thing we really have left that we wanna get rid of, we've gotten rid of hydrocarbons, we've trapped the soot, um, and the last thing is down here at the bottom, it's called the SCR catalyst or selective catalyst reduction. Um, a lot of people who don't even own a diesel have heard of diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, the DEF tank on this guy is right here. Diesel exhaust fluid is basically a concentration of urea that passes through the piping and gets injected into the uh, exhaust stream right here at what's called the DEF dosing valve. So it hits the exhaust stream before the exhaust stream hits the selective catalyst. What this guy does is it causes a chemical reaction to occur within the gas forming an ammonia type compound that reacts with the precious metals in this catalyst and breaks up NOx formations into mostly nitrogen and water, which is stuff that's already in the atmosphere. So on this vehicle, we would have two different things controlling NOx or nitrates of oxygen production. We have the EGR that we already talked about and we have the selective catalyst system. The, the selective catalyst system is actually becoming so good on uh, modern engines at reducing NOx levels that a lot of trucks are starting to come out now or a lot of engine manufacturers without EGR on their engines, which is really good because EGR caused a lot of carbon buildup issues in engines and caused dirty oil issues, stuff like that. Um, so it's really good that this SCR system is doing such a good job and we're able to get rid of EGR. Now you notice I said that not all engines have the after treatment fuel injector on it. So <clears throat> I'll point out why. This engine right here is an older Cummins HPITP engine that has mechanical injectors that are metered in time, but is still mechanically pulsed with a rocker arm. So this guy who can dose the, the fluid into the uh, stream directly so that those injectors don't have to do something that they're not really designed for. Most of the new engines coming out now are some form of high pressure common rail. So this engine right here, is a high pressure common rail engine. Uh, so this one basically doesn't use a rocker arm. It uses the pressure at the cylinders and a signal from the ECM to open the injector panel to let the already pressurized fuel enter the cylinder. So since the pressurized fuel is always at the injector already, that means the ECM can pulse that injector anytime it wants to. So on an engine with this type of fuel system, you don't need that after treatment fuel injector because this guy can just inject fuel into the cylinder on the exhaust stroke, which accomplishes the same thing. So if you look on the back side of this turbo, there's no after treatment fuel injector like we saw on the other one. So high pressure common rail engines won't have that after treatment fuel injector on them. So I hope this simplified how we clean up our exhaust on a diesel engine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there are other videos that you would like to see about other types of diesel exhaust systems or any diesel related material at all, please let me know because I like making these videos. I do want to show you guys one last thing before we sign off. On most of your trucks that are made after 2010, you're going to have a box similar to this guy right here that all three of those canisters I showed you are gonna be inside this box, not stretched out along a pipe. So that's kind of what you're gonna run into out in the field for these newer trucks versus having each one of those canisters really easy to get to. And you can see this is a, uh, this is a uh, Detroit right here, not a Cummins, but kind of the same concepts. The only big difference here is the EGR valve is right here, it's right by the cooler instead of on the other side like the Cummins. So, like I said, uh, if you like what you see, please like, please subscribe. 
Um, and please let me know what else you would like to see in the comments and I'll make a video for you. Thanks. Bye.